Hi, this is Tali Kogan from Tel Aviv Couture and I'm currently located in beautiful but very freezing Chicago. I'm very excited to be part of your program Fashion and Location and I'm really hoping that you're going to enjoy this video and I'm the most I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to contribute to your study. So first I will start with introducing uh, myself and telling you a little bit about what I do and about my company. So my background is completely different than what I do right now. I'm actually, I graduated with an accounting and business degree and I worked a little bit as an accountant, but very quickly I realized that this is not something I want to do, especially um, uh, because I was planning on staying in the United States. I really wanted to do something that will connect me with Israel and, and they just didn't know what it is until I came up with this really awesome idea um, to support Israeli designers and this is how the idea of uh, Tel Aviv Couture was born. And about nine years ago I launched the company and um, the business model has uh, been changed a lot ever since. I would say that the biggest uh, the biggest advice I would say for I would I would give to entrepreneurs to really be open-minded because uh, my company is in a completely different place today um, from uh, where it started and it, it's uh, not only because of its progress it's also because um, the business model that I just had to change um, in order to become more successful. So to, when I started Tel Aviv Couture, uh, I've been working a little bit with uh, boutiques, uh, but more than anything, I've been really selling. I've been mostly selling a lot uh, through events and through my own showroom. And then very quickly, I've been I've been doing pretty well, but very quickly I realized that I'm very limited with the amount of, of sales that I could generate this way. And this is how uh, Tel Aviv Couture .com was born. Majority of the business in the world, uh, everybody are going online. And we all understand uh, why that's the future so for the last uh, four or five years I've been focusing mainly on uh, constant development of uh, my online store while working on that I branched out and started working on uh, other things and one of the biggest one is uh, my lifestyle blog tallycogan.com where you can also find the blog through televicouture.com so my blog is purely inspirational and um, I cover in my blog pretty much anything and everything that inspires me and I think that would inspire my readers. I don't blog only about Tel Aviv Couture designers, but once I find uh, something, something, interesting, something interesting, I always gonna blog, uh, I, I will, I always gonna blog about it. So there's always gonna be a connection between Tel Aviv Couture.com and, uh, and my blog. Another thing I've been working on is um, I've been providing consulting services uh, to new designers, designers that just graduate from a uh, design school in Israel. I help them to shape their first uh, step and, uh, and I'm being involved in the development of the first collection. I also accumulated um, a very uh, decent clientele that uh, I've been working with uh, for many years. Uh, mainly styling them and styling the wardrobes uh, for different type of occasions. But my main goal and my main idea is uh, to bring awareness of Israeli designers all over the world. And no matter what I'm doing, I'm always going back to uh, to TelavivCouture.com and everything that I'm learning in this uh, super exciting and super broad industry, I'm trying to apply back to TelavivCouture.com. And my goal and my mission is eventually to have a mega uh, online fashion house for Israeli designers that they have been and that they are known and selling all over the world. Sharon sent me here some questions that you been that you ask me, and I'm gonna just um, read all of them and answer them one by one. So the first question is: Is the fashion world talking about Israel? Absolutely, I think uh, there is a lot of buzz going on about Israeli designers. Uh, first, is uh, first Israel Fashion Week is back, which is huge. It's really big for Israeli fashion market because this is what created a lot of uh, a lot of buzz around the world. Another thing, Israeli designer is known for their creativity, for the uniqueness. And um, I feel uh, like the world is very, very excited about that. I think it's very cool. 
In your opinion, what are the major differences between Israel fashion and the fashion in Europe or in the United States? Um, I would say that Israel is a little bit more casual, but still very, very chic and very trendy. Uh, you will actually be amazed uh, by uh, how uh, fashionable people, especially in, in, the, in the big city in Israel, in Tel Aviv. Can you detect a certain trend that has developed in Israel and disappeared? I would have to say it's the harem style pants. You know, it's the pants that uh, have look a little bit like we were wearing a diaper. It's a little bit funny, but it's uh, if you wear it right, I actually personally I love this trend, and I've been uh, excuse me, I actually own a couple of and I still wear a couple of uh, pants like that. But I know pers from personal experience that American customers are struggling with this uh, trend. They never really welcome that uh, that much. They've never been really open for that. And I feel like in Israel, this trend is uh, slowly disappearing as well. My student realized that there is not much of dressing outside of Tel Aviv. Is, there, is this kind of fashion that Israel promotes in the US? So I would have to say like in everywhere around the world, if you go to the big city, you will see that people are dressing up a lot dressier than in smaller towns and in suburbs. Just because there's a lot of people are going out a lot more in the big city and there is there there is the culture. In big cities, the culture is a little bit different. I definitely think that um, Israel uh, is catering um, the variety of fashions to the world. Let's start with that, that there is a lot of amazing jewelry and accessories design, like really cool pieces that you can, you can find not only in boutiques around the world, but also in museums. Um, another big thing is uh, bridal and evening wear uh, that you can see a lot of them um, branching out into United States and Europe and some of the ready-to-wear ready collections as well. But I would probably say that accessories, jewelry, bridal and evening wear uh, is um, becoming a little bit more of a trend um, that it, and it, and more, of a, more of a success here from Israeli designers. What is the common reaction of people when they find out that the clothing items are from Israel? Oh, they get very, very excited. I feel like a lot of people that go visit Israel, they really get excited about shopping in Israel. So there is something about that Israeli fashions that they love. And um, I think they get really, really uh, when I travel around the, the world and uh, when I travel in the United States and feature Israeli designers, people get really excited and even when I, have a conversation and meet people and I tell them about Tel Aviv Couture, there is a lot of wow and, and excitement uh, and I'm really happy about that. Are there any successful Israeli designers in the US and if so, who are they? Absolutely, there is a lot of Israeli, successful Israeli designers in the US. There is some uh, emerging smaller designers that um, started their own Etsy boutiques on the, on the, on the big uh, website Etsy that you probably know and some of them have done uh, websites and they're they're pretty successful if I would have to point the names I would start with blush she's one of the designers that I personally been working with for years and uh, she's focusing more on evening wear I know she's been selling a lot uh, she's been doing a lot of bridal parties her clothing beautiful very uh, approachable price wise very body conscious compliments many body shapes and I know she's doing extremely well and just like having her own store in Etsy. And as I said, you can also find some of her collections on TelavivCouture.com. Another designer that I personally adore, huge fan, I have a lot of his pieces in my own closet is Percy Yaniv. Uh, his ma majority of his business is also not in Israel, it's in Europe and the United States. Uh, he's, um, also focusing lately in bridal and evening, very couture pieces, uh, extremely fabulous. Another big designer that you should know, uh, if you still don't, is Mesquite. Mesquite is uh, one of Israel's, I could talk about Mesquite for uh, another hour. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a background about it and I actually wrote the entire blog post about it. And the name of the post is Sharon Tal 
meeting the visionary be behind the rebirth of my skid. So just like a, a, in a very quick summary, so Israel actually used to have a fashion house uh, back in 1954 and it was very successful. You could see Mesquite designs in Neiman Marcos, Saks Fifth Avenue, Bergdorf, and it was worn by mega designers. And, and in, 19, in 1995, um, after 40 years of operation, the company went silent. And finally, three years ago, uh, the brand was revived. And right now, they're making a major mark uh, on the international market. I know that my ski, they travel all around the world with their clothing and they produce a lot of trunk shows and they sh spread the world about the brand. Collections are absolutely amazing. Could, uh, Sharon Chi by herself used to work uh, for Alexander McQueen and uh, for uh, Lan Van and uh, she gave tremendous uh, embroidery experience that she brought back to Israel and uh, and now she is the head designer of Mesquite and uh, her designs are absolutely out of the world, completely different than anything else we've seen so far from Israel and I feel like this is gonna, that's gonna really make a um, big change uh, in Israeli fashion market in the entire world. Other designers that I would like to mention is um, Igal Azrael. He is an Israeli designer who actually um, self-taught, and um, he's working. He's based in New York. He stores in New York, and he's he's uh, manufacturing in New York. And uh, but he's Israeli, and he's very successful. His line, he his collections include ready to wear and evening. Of course, there's Kendon Sasson. He's focusing in plus sizes. He's been around for many years and he has a very loyal clientele here in the United States. Also, Ronan Han. As far as jewelry and accessory designer, I would have to point to Norita Ami that I am personally a huge fan. Very artsy, very beautiful pieces. And uh, you can find them um, in some uh, high end boutiques in Europe and the United States as well. They also sell online and they made their latest collaboration was with Topshop in Europe, which is, I think it's a uh, very impressive. Uh, congratulations to Norit Ami. Is there such a thing as an Israeli style? What would you, what would you say define the Israeli style? So maybe because it's Israel is a warm country, we don't really have a lot of uh, cold weather there. I think um, what's, what define the Israeli style is um, very comfortable clothing, uh, very comfortable but very chic, uh, and uh, very body conscious, which means that uh, Israeli clothing and Israeli style would really complement many different body shapes. I think designers are focusing and design and working a lot with, with drapes and pleats, and, and um, probably I would say uh, the Israeli style would be more of like casual but still very, very chic. The pictures on your blog loaded with style. Well, thank you. Does it require a certain character to dress like that? Well, first and the most, I think, it's the most important characteristic, I would say, is to be open-minded. It's the most important thing, to follow the trends and to experiment them. While uh, I'm styling some of my clients, I. Sometimes I hear, uh, I hear statements such, oh no, this is not my style, I'm not gonna even try this on. So, big mistake, there is no such a thing, this is not my style. I always encourage my, my clients to try new things, to get out of your comfort zone and to try things that you never tried before. You actually might be very surprised. As far as my own personal style, I feel like my uh, style got evolved during this career. Uh, today I'm more focusing in my signature style, um, but the, the, the biggest thing that changed is my confidence. I feel like I'm a lot more confident with the way with the, with the way I dress myself, and this is something that I'm trying to. Um, that this is something that I'm working with my uh, focusing when I'm when I'm styling my clients. The most important thing is to give them the confidence because when you wear beautiful clothing and you feel comfortable in yourself in your clothing it's gonna it's gonna give you a lot of confidence 
I think I answered uh, all the questions that Sharon sent me. However, if you have any other questions, I'm going to be more than happy to answer them. You can contact me directly by email. Uh, it's tali at talibikachar.com. You can also contact me by, uh, through social media. I'm daily. Uh, you can find me daily on social media. They're strong on Instagram. I have my own page, Tali Kogan, and I also have a page for Tel Aviv Couture. I'm also, excuse me, I'm also on Facebook, and um, you can also uh, contact me, comment me directly through my blog. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you so much for listening and for watching this video. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your program. I really hope that I was able to contribute uh, to, to contribute to your study. And I wish you best of luck in anything you do in, uh, in your school. Thank you. And a Happy New Year. Cheers.